Hello there. There can no longer be any doubt. The Met Police is biased as an organisation. It is now institutionally anti-Semitic. The Met Police prevented a pro-Israel prayer walk within a Jewish area of London, Golders Green, from going ahead. And why? Because the Met warned the organisers that those taking part risked being injured or intimidated. To the point the organisers felt forced to abandon the meeting. But the Met Police did allow a pro-Palestine rally to take place in central London on the same day, presumably because the attendees of that particular event did not risk someone from another group injuring or intimidating them. So are we saying that where protests and demonstrations in London are concerned, that might is right? Or that the Met Police favours one side over the other? Either way, these last couple of weeks have shone a light into the inner machinations of the Met and found it wanting. The organiser of the Pray for Israel and the Jewish People event is a group called Christian Action Against Antisemitism, and they had initially hoped for a 30,000 people presence outside the Israeli embassy in central London but had decided to move it into Golders Green after talking to members of the Jewish community. Now notice that the organisers were not Jewish, they were Christians. But two days before the event was scheduled to start, the Met called them up and told them to cancel it. The Met claimed that some people were portraying their event as an attack on Muslims. They also put out a statement saying, as with any event, the police offer guidance and advice. Following those discussions, a decision was made by the organiser to cancel the vigil. Well, if the police assess you are under direct threat of an attack, wouldn't you? And in an email sent by the police to the group seen by the Telegraph, an unnamed police sergeant said... Your planned event on Saturday was picked up by an individual and retweeted. It received a lot of views. Unfortunately, we have now identified tweets calling on brothers to make their way to Golders Green on Saturday. This would clearly present a threat to your event. And the sergeant also added that I understand your frustration, but you have made the right decision to cancel your event. The police do not want anyone to be injured or intimidated, regardless of their beliefs or allegiances. Please put out the cancellation within your own social media groups as soon as possible. That last bit sounds a bit panicky to me, but we now see it is peaceful gatherings of both Jews and Christians that are coming under the hammer of police cancellation, just in case another religion gets full of, uh, unpeace. Haley Ace of Christian Action Against Anti-Semitism said, Our first response was outrage, because we have a right to gather and feel safe on the streets of London, especially as we are gathering around a banner of peace. It felt like a silencing. Once again, we have a case of the peaceful having to bow to what the police see as the potentially violent. It should be obvious to anyone observing these developments that the police do not feel they have the strength to order the pro-Palestine marchers to also call their event off. Either by incompetence or by design, the Met has been captured by pro-Hamas supporters and will do nothing to get in the way of their now open power plays. Is this what the Met hierarchy calls inclusivity and equality are before the law? The Met has therefore effectively become institutionally anti-Semitic. So shouldn't it be torn apart and rebuilt? And this rot started at the head, as a result of all that woke brainwashing. And by the way, 
the Met does not launder its anti-Semitism away by stopping a couple of thugs trying to gatecrash a silence for those Hamas held hostages event on Sunday evening especially as those attending felt the need for a heavy presence of private security guards from the Community Security Trust, an organisation set up to protect the Jewish community. That we need such a body speaks volumes. Now it seems that the Home Secretary, Soella Braverman, will be having a chat with the Met Commissioner, Sir Mark Rowley, at some point today, with reports saying she will challenge him over the decision to not arrest those at the protests this weekend, calling for a jihad against Israel. But the Met has already said that the word jihad has too many meanings to make it an arrestable word. Now it transpires that according to press reports, there has already been a terrorist incident in the UK linked to Gaza. But details of the case are being suppressed for legal reasons and to try and prevent copycat events, or so we're told. Funny how some things can be so tightly suppressed, isn't it? Don't we have the right to know? Aren't we grown up enough to handle it? As Tory MP Ian Duncan Smith said, I think the public does have a right to know that something has happened. People need to know whether their streets are safe. Seems the establishment does not agree with him. Now, if you are concerned about this increasingly disturbing situation, you might want to go to the website britishfriendsofisrael.org and sign the October Declaration. Take a look at the list of those who organised and signed it. As the declaration itself says, no one thought this would be necessary in the 21st century, but sadly, it is. Richard. The police are allowing the freedom of expression of one section of society, but not another. Which in no uncertain terms means the police are on the side of the section of society and the demographic therein that they allow to express themselves. You, you guys carry on, the police are saying. That's fine. But you lot, oh no. This means that freedom of expression is the luxury of the exploding demographic in our society. Who decided that this demographic can have carte blanche in expressing extremism and voicing support for terrorism, whilst other sections of society are worried in case they misgender someone and have the police turn up at their door to arrest them for the hate crime of improper identification of somebody? Oh. Those of us who are speaking out against the hate crimes being openly committed on the streets of this country and now being accused of peddling hate speech. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the dystopian nightmare we find ourselves in. Britain has fallen. First, it was the Jews who were banned from protesting with peaceful vigils for their children. But it was only a matter of time until Christians would find themselves also banned for supporting their Jewish brothers and sisters. No, ladies and gentlemen, there is only one section in society that is allowed to protest, and that should tell you everything. Don't listen to the mealy words of Rishi Sunak and Suella Braverman when they say openly supporting terrorist organisations on the streets of Britain is not, not acceptable, because it clearly is acceptable to them. Otherwise, it would have been stamped out by them. It's, it's their government, and they are supposed to be in control. Unfortunately, there is no way out of the current situation via the ballot box because when it is almost a foregone conclusion that Labour will get in and utterly support the demographic that is currently spouting hate speech, how do you think we're going to get out of this via the ballot box? Do you think that's going to work? Me neither. But not to worry. As I have said before, the public will soon be siding with those people spouting hateful words towards the Jewish community as Israel begins its entrance into Gaza and more innocent children lose their lives and the images start hitting social media of pretty horrific stuff. Yes, the anti-Semitism of the 1930s and 1940s, that anti-Semitism that took place in Germany has already reappeared and is now expressing itself. Yes, right now the Star of David is being daubed on the homes of Jews in Germany and in other countries across the world. 
The Jewish people know what is coming and the evil that they are about to face because it is the same evil that they have always had to face. This is not the Ukraine-Russia conflict here and that divided people, including dividing Jeff and myself. No, this is far more black and white because evil is walking amongst us and flaunting itself in full view of the entire world and very few people are prepared to stand up against it. Out of fear. Yes, fear of the state. Fear of those that commit such evil and terrible deeds as we saw in, in Israel recently. But also fear of societal rejection from the liberal left brainwashed generation that are coming behind us. Which will soon be governing us incidentally. And have no doubt in your minds the next generation have been programmed to hate us by the education system. Yes, when we drop our children off to school or to university, we are in fact dropping them off at the gates of our enemies who will turn our children against us. Anyway, you lot, we know you like to have a good natter in the comment section below. And Jeff and I both look forward to reading your thoughts and learning from you. So type away. And yes, this, this is the bit of the videos I hate doing. So please, if you enjoy the output of the channel, please help us keep going via Patreon, PayPal and the YouTube donation system. Links in the descriptions box below on how to support the channel. A few quid a month. The cost of a a pint makes such a difference. And both Jeff and I would like to thank each and every one of you who has donated and signed up to Patreon to give a mon monthly contribution. That, that means a lot to us. Because without your support, we are not able to keep going. So God bless each and every one of you who has donated. And obviously, God bless each and every one of you who hasn't. Thank you all so much. And thank you for listening. Bye for now.